Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about the British city look. Welcome to the third and final video in a series of three videos going back into my childhood and what I observed people wearing back in the late 60s and into the 70s. And this week we're looking at typically what people were wearing in London and big cities um, around the UK at the time. And uh, whilst I was brought up in the countryside, we did frequent uh, local towns, cities um, and London on, a, on the odd occasion. Had relatives living in London at the time. And so it wasn't uncommon to see this typical sort of look. So, for example, I think we can all relate to back in the late mid 50s to the 60s and into, even into the 70s, where people would wear quite austere clothing if you're in a certain job role or trade. So um, the bowler hat, as an example here, it was typically a management uniform, if you like. Uh, people would wear a dark navy blue suit, possibly a grey suit, um, white shirt, white uh, pocket square or a folded handkerchief. Uh, typically there would be a gold watch um, and obviously cufflinks as well. Uh, to go with that uh, look but it was quite austere in a way and the bowler hat was an example of somebody in management or a, the, a director or higher echelon of an organisation or company. So uh, the tie is a little bit adventurous for this look so you'll have to take my interpretation a little bit loosely. Um, I've tried to create that vibe again so the club tie was quite typical in the day it was uh, very important in its role in establishing your pecking order within an organization and the people that you mixed with uh, and that carried a lot of weight uh, where you, what school you went to for example if you went to Oxford or if you went to Cambridge um, or if you went to Leicester or Loughborough or you went to Durham University, they all had their peck in order. But typically in London, you would see people generally walking to work wearing a bowler hat, uh, quite typical in its day. Uh, people that worked in the markets would obviously wear, um, the financial markets uh, would wear bowler hats as well. That later on became more um, uh, less common. But if we go down to the next level, people that were foremen, supervisors, uh, that sort of level, middle management, then we'd see something differently. We'd see maybe instead of the bowler hat, they would wear a trilby back in the day. Um, and very similar, the rest would be very similar, it's just obviously um, the trilby was a more uh, lower level than the bowler hat at the time, or in fact the Homburg hum uh, at the time. So obviously with this we could change the tie, um, and this is not the only look that was around at that time in history. And so this is going to be a little bit of a journey through time, if you like, as well, because things changed. Um, people became more relaxed. And I'm going to come on to that um, just after we just cut back to this image here. Now, as you can see, this is a typical look. But in the winter months, um, then we're looking at a coat an overcoat and it wouldn't just be any old coat it wouldn't be a puffer jacket or, or something as relaxed as that so it would be a tailored wool coat 
um, which was typical of the day. Uh, and that would probably match the same colour as the suit. So um, in the late 50s, in, into the early 60s, really, um, this would be quite typical of what you'd see in uh, most cities. Uh, people would, at the middle class, working class end, for example, if they worked in London, um, even the people that worked in shops, department stores, would look very similar to this. Um, and you notice there's a little bit of uh, a brown accent in some of the suits that are worn, but they tend to be very dark colours and sombre colours. Uh, very little colour involved at, back in that era, but that was soon to change. And uh, as we get into the 60s, we start seeing quite radical change. Uh, at the end of the 50s, there was a, an, a group which we all know now as MODS, but it, was, it stood for a revolution as such. It stood for uh, modernists, uh, people that would change the history of fashion for men in a lot of ways. And um, we started to see things where, for example, the Beatles came on the scene and they were wearing um, bum freezer jackets, which means that the jacket length was shortened uh, and we see that modern, that mod look. So you see, uh, for example, a slimmer silhouetted cut on the suit. Uh, we see um, a narrow lapel, very tapered leg on this. And we also see the introduction of the Chelsea boot. Uh, and this was quite radical in its day. And even now, people still replicate that look on a regular basis. Uh, if you look at Jam, the, the, the band, the group at the time, they were out of sync with the modern uh, time, but they replicate that look and they still manage to carry it off. And it's still very much the same now. We have the film Quadrophenia, which was, uh, you know, very typical of the day and the fashion that was involved. So that then changed because from that, then things go a little bit more uh, relaxed and we go into a period called the Peacock uh, period, uh, the Peacock Revolution. And then we start seeing really uh, crazy, quite crazy combinations. I don't think anybody would wear it nowadays, but you know, for example, multiple coloured pattern shirts, uh, bright coloured ties, paisley ties were coming into fashion. Um, actually, the suits as well, they were being made out of other materials. Now, this was made out of uh, upholstery um, material because they couldn't get a material that looked or felt like it. And, um, you know, it fantastic suit and this brings to mind uh, images of Austin Powers um, played by Mike Miles um, <laughs> and the uh, the image that he portrays here is quite typical of the day in the uh, in the 60s so that then brings us into more into the latter part of the 60s and um, we see a change and a contrast and an interest in colour. Um, so, typically, whilst you might still have the white handkerchief and you might still wear a navy pinstripe suit, you might still wear the white shirt, but you might add a little bit of colour or a little bit of detail into the tie. Let's have a look at uh, a change in the colour of the suit. So here we have a charcoal grey suit, three buttoned. Um, as we get into the 60s, there are three buttoned and four buttoned, which means that the lapels come in even more. And we get that typical mod look, inspired by the Beatles and promoted by the Beatles in their look. 
uh, the introduction of Chelsea boots and in particular Cuban heels. We started seeing boots with Cuban heels hitting uh, the main street as it were. All uh, encouraged and uh, promoted in a way by the Beatles back in the 60s when they really did hit the scene in a big style. So in this case uh, we start seeing the creeping of colour coming in. Um, burgundy tie with a spot on it, uh, coloured pocket square, still a white shirt and it sort of bridges that it's more informal but for more for the working class level this was quite exceptional uh, and accepted in the workplace. For example uh, the department stores wanted to promote a similar line of look so they encouraged their younger members of staff to wear something a little bit different. Um, and that's how um, they influence people to buy their product. And a lot of traditional suit makers uh, in Savile Row started to change their designs uh, as we see um, through the Beatles and uh, the suit designs were more relaxed and more on an Italian design which gave it a much more uh, richer and uh, relaxed feel about them. So from here we then go more towards the peacock end of the scale where we start seeing more colour being introduced in the tie. Now it went quite crazy at one stage, very psychedelic in colours and nature. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that side of it um, but I have alluded to it in the video earlier. But in this case I would suggest maybe changing the tie, change the pocket square, see what you think and also I'm going to introduce some Italian brogue shoes. Uh, lovely pair of shoes and really does complement the charcoal grey in the suit. Uh, when we start seeing the peacock effect and in the 60s we have a change in the suit designs. We also get the same in the sort of jewellery as well. So we end up, we start seeing a lot more stainless steel, uh, silver, uh, cufflinks are a lot more simplified. Even the shirts change their uh, design. They're not quite as long in the uh, bottom of the shirt. A little bit more tapered in the waist. Um, so yeah, a lot of changes in a very short period of time really. In about 15 years, we went from uh, quite an uh, archaic and uh, very austere sort of look to a much more modern look that we see even today. We still see that typical modern look. So this concludes my uh, little journey into the past. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give us a thumbs up, if you'd like to subscribe, then please feel free to do so. We like constructive comments. So if you'd like to make one, jot it, jot it downstairs and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So until next time, take care.